Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. Any version this will apply to, so whether you're using something from 1995 or 2022, uh, this will apply. What I'd like to do is show you just a few things that could potentially go wrong with your auto sum calculations if you are moving data around. It's not something you're likely to encounter too often, but it's worth knowing just in case. And I've got a table of numbers or two tables of numbers here with total cells waiting for the calculation. And we're going to use auto sum to complete those calculations. So I've selected cell B15, as you can see on the first column. And if I just click auto sum, you'll see that the range of cells is selected and I can just click on the tick in the formula bar area there to accept that calculation. And I'll do the same thing on the second list of numbers. And the only thing you'll notice is that there's a gap between the list of numbers and the result cell. But in any event, if I click on auto sum, it correctly selects the range plus the blank cell. And if I click on the tick, we get the same result. And just to remind, there are two ways of checking the correct range has been selected. One is to click on the function or formula and look in the formula bar and you'll see the range between the parentheses there or between brackets. The other way is to double click on the function in this case and you'll see a blue boundary box which tells you exactly which cells are part of that calculation. Okay, I'll just press escape there to cancel that. Now as you may be aware, if you move values around or calculations around, Excel is generally quite clever at keeping things together. So for example, if I select cells A15 and B15, which contain a total label plus my auto sum, and move that to a new location, obviously the calculation still works because it's looking at the same range of cells. Now what if I move the cells? So if I select everything from B3 down to B14 in this case, and put the mouse pointer on the edge of the selection, get the four-way arrow. I can click and drag that range of cells. I'll just move it across one column into the C column. You'll see the calculation still works. And if I click on that and we take a look in the formula bar, you'll see that sum function is now looking at the range C3 to C14 instead of the B column values it was looking at previously. Now let's say you had done an initial auto sum and you decided to move your total to the top of the spreadsheet instead of below the list of numbers. So if I select those two cells again, and I'll drag them up to B1 and C1. So that's where my total will be from now on. Sometimes when you're dealing with a very long list of numbers, it's more convenient to have your summary of those values, whether it's totals or other calculations, at the top of the spreadsheet rather than at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is move the other calculation as well. So I'll select total and the calculation and I'm going to move that up as well. Well, let's just move that across to G and H actually. Now, if I move my values here, so it mirrors the previous list of numbers. So I've got in this case B blank or column B blank. I'm going to have column G blank and move my values to column H. So I've selected the values, click and drag and straight away something's gone wrong there. So if I click on that calculation, have a look in the formula bar, you'll see it's still calculating on column G. Um, and that's something you want to watch out for if you use gaps between your values and the calculation where you use AutoSum. Because AutoSum, as you saw, automatically included the blank cell. And so unless you move the entire range that was part of the calculation, the auto sum function will not update properly or at all. So what I'm going to do is undo that. And now I'm going to select the same range with one addition, the blank cell that was previously part of the auto sum function, move that across. And there we get the calculation working properly. I'm just going to undo a few commands there. I'll reset that second table so it's back as it was before. And I'll show you a calculation on my second worksheet. And as you can see, I've got a very important calculation. Um, this particular calculation is looking at those two 
some calculations on sheet 1. C1 and G16. We know that C1 is a calculation that we've moved to the top of the spreadsheet and that formula is updating correctly. Now if I go back to sheet 1 and I do what I did before, so let's move the totals up to the top. I'm going to select that range of just the numbers again, drag that list of numbers across. We know the sum function fails to update when you do that because we haven't included the full range in the selection. And if I go to sheet 2, you'll notice now that although you'll see here the calculations correctly followed the sum function, the result is now wrong. It's only including the result from the first sum function because the second sum function is now looking at a range of blank cells. And if I go back to sheet 1, it's a perfectly reasonable thing to do to select the numbers and move the cells rather than include blank cells in the selection. So how do we fix that problem? There's a couple of things you can do. One is to simply double click again on the function and you saw earlier this blue boundary box which shows the exact range that's included in the formula or function. And I can actually drag that boundary box if I drag it across to column H. And while I'm here I can also put the mouse pointer at the bottom right there, get the two-way arrow and drag up so the formula now only includes the values and no extra blank cell. Click on the tick and that corrects that function. Another thing I can do if I just uh, undo that previous correction, again double click on the function and this time select the existing range of cells, so the highlighted like so, and then I can click and drag again down the list of numbers, click on the tick and that again has corrected the function so it only includes, if I double click to show, so we see it only includes the numbers and no extraneous blank cells. Again, I'll just press the escape key to cancel the edit mode on the function. That does not include any blank cells now, so I can just select the range of numbers and move them wherever, and the function will work perfectly fine. I better move them back to where they're supposed to be, starting in row 3. And if I now go back to my sheet 2, very important calculation, it's now working properly. Even though the actual formula hasn't changed at all, it's simply following those sum functions. On the previous sheet, we've now corrected the fault. Now, I could avoid all of that if I just put everything back where it was in the beginning. So, it's a perfectly normal thing to do to have a blank row between your values and the sum function, just so there's a nice separator. It makes it easier to read. But when you're creating the sum function, if I click on the auto sum button again, simply reselect the correct range and you're good to go. If you have a very long list of numbers, selecting can be a bit tedious, in which case what you do is you select the first value, hold down Control and Shift, and then press the down arrow, and that will go to the bottom value. Click on your tick, and now we've selected just the values. And so whatever I do now, if I move my total calculation, it works fine. And if I move the values, it still works fine. This only really applies when you're moving data by clicking and dragging, I should say. So if I undo everything one more time, hopefully not too bored of this, but if I do the same things, if I do also sum and include the range with a blank cell without really bothering to reselect, move my total again. And this time, instead of moving the values, what I'm going to do is right click on the letter G, the column header, and choose insert. Now what's happened there, of course, is Excel has moved all the data to the right of the inserted column and everything remains exactly as it was. If I click on my auto sum function, it's H3 to H15, which is including the blank cell. So in this case, using the insert column command avoids some of the things I explained earlier. But nonetheless, hopefully you found it useful. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.